everyone, and welcome to a special edition of UC Sports. I'm Kara Hibbs-Leva. And I'm Vivian Souders. Today we're going to be showing you all the best moments of athletics this year at the University of Charleston, and who better to do so than two athletes themselves. Vivian, you are so right. Everyone sit back, relax, because for the next half hour, you'll be getting an inside look at the Golden Eagle sports teams. Well, first off, I think we need to mention that UC would be nothing without its athletes. Out of the 1,500 students enrolled at UC, the 15 sports teams have made our population so diverse with students all over the country. A lot of students have come from other countries as well. Let's get started with our biggest team on campus. Football. Football. <laughs> Even though the football team lost many of their starting seniors and their longtime coach Tony DeMeo, they were still able to finish strong with a conference record of 5-3. and three. I agree, and I think that senior running back Jordan Roberts from Madison, West Virginia played a major role in their turnaround. Here's Roberts on how he felt about this season. My accomplishments this year was uh, our offense uh, finished the conference number one in rushing, and some of my Accomplishments were uh, had the most rushing yards in a season at UC. Um, had the most all-purpose yards. And I think that's the only two school records I broke, and I was All-American this year. But uh, hopefully next year, better things can happen and we can win the conference. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about Jordan in the next couple years. The Golden Eagles are returning eight seniors for the 2012 season, and head coach Pat Kirkland is excited about the new incoming recruits. Another major fall sport, women's volleyball, had many high points this season, including the monumental 500th career win of head coach Bren Stevens. Who are we? Who are we? The team finished their season with a conference record of 9-5, with three players receiving honors at the conference tournament. Senior setter Katie Williams from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania was a first team All-Weaviac selection, and here she talks about her four-year experience as a member of the women's volleyball team. It's been a really great experience the past four years. Um, our team has grown and change every single year. We've had a completely new team every year, um, but it's good to see the progress of the program and all the girls just coming together. Um, there's been a lot of girls on the team the past two years that have really just you know gotten close and would have been able to play the same people over and over together. So it's been a good, good bonding experience for all of us. The Golden Eagles are losing their starting setter, but will be returning five experienced seniors for the 2012 season. After 19 successful seasons, head coach Bren Stevens has obtained the athletic director position at the University of Charleston. Although this means that she'll be stepping down from her position as head coach, she's very optimistic about her choice of Jason Kozak as a new leader. I am not going to tell you that it wasn't hard the uh, first day when there was a practice with coach Jason Kozak, our new coach, who's going to do a great job and I'm glad he's here. Uh, walked out and watched practice for about five minutes and got a little choked up and thought I went home and cut my grass and um, I cut the yard three times. Um, it's probably the best the grass has ever looked on my lawn. Uh, but, um, you know, I had to release some energy, some stress there because it's hard to give those reins over to someone else. Um, because there's still a lot of kids on that team that I recruited and uh, have been with me for two or three years and some even for just one year. and. It's hard to hand that over to someone else to take care of, they're always your kids, so um, I'm going to miss that part, but I know I made the right decision for me going forward. Um, this is my dream, and um, as I would say to any student or student athlete coming through is find what you're passionate about and get to do that every day, because when I come to work every day, I love what I do, and I never regret getting up in the morning and going, oh, i got to go to work at UC. I'm like, eh, i got a lot on my plate today at UC, lots of stuff to do, but I'm excited to be here. 
I'm sure that the girls will miss Bren Stevens next season, but having her around campus will make the transition a lot easier on them. And speaking of new coaches, the men's soccer team was sad to see the departure of head coach Chad Dernberger, but were able to continue their tradition of winning under new hire Chris Grassi. The men's soccer team had a conference record of 8-1, with five players receiving conference honors as they had a winning season. Two of the most outstanding performers for men's soccer were juniors Dion Peters and Rob Vinson. Dion Peters, UC's all-time scoring leader, was named Conference Player of the Year, as well as Division II Dactronics Atlantic Region Player of the Year. Peters and Vincent were both selected first team all region along with junior defender Dan Wamsley of Manchester, England, and four were named to the second team. Rob Vincent, a two-time All-American and pro prospect, shares his experience about the UC soccer team after this short break. Welcome back. You're watching the UC Sports Network. Here's a look at Rob Vincent's UC soccer experience. Um, it's been amazing. Obviously, we've had some really good memories. Um, we've accomplished some really um, big feats. We've won, you know, three conference tournaments, three conference titles. Been to the NCAA tournament a couple of times. So I mean, it's been it's been really good to be a part of it. Unfortunately, the UC men's soccer team was not invited into the NCAA tournament this year. But the UC community is hopeful for next season's outcome, as they are returning many seniors. More on soccer, the women's team finished above 500 in the Weavey Act this season. And freshman Holly Big was named to the Atlantic All-Region second team and Kim D'Angelo, who was the 2010 Freshman of the Year was honored for the second time to the NSCAA Atlantic All-Region third team. Kim gave us an inside scoop on, on how the team bonded before a game. Well, this year we um, had ankle bracelets that we made and if we would put them in our shin guards. We'd always put them um, whatever foot it was on in the team huddle and we would do, like have our team talk and do our team cheer and do that. They seem like a close group of girls. Another team that spends a lot of time together while running is women's cross country. A star standout on the team was Debbie Amos, who received numerous awards this year and finished third at the Weave the Act Championship, running the 6K course in under 23 minutes. Amos explains how running relieves her stress. I do it for me. It's just a way that I can get out there and relieve my stress and everything that kind of goes on at school. Um, it's something that I do, like not for anybody else. I just go out and I can think about whatever, solve problems <laughs> in my head and whatnot. Along with Debbie, freshman Courtney Willie was also a top 20 finisher at conference. The cross country team will be returning all of its runners for the 2012 season. Continuing with fall sports, women's tennis has continued their tradition of excellence with their success on the court and in the classroom. record of 9-0, and zero, they had no problem grabbing that Weaviac title once again. All conference winners were Sarah Monsheimer, Laura Smith, and Marcella Torres. In doubles, Marcella Torres and Laura Smith won at the number one spot by an 8-6 to six count at the Weaviac Championship. Laura Smith is from Townsville, Australia, and she shared with us how she likes playing with Port Charleston. 
It's been quite an experience being from Australia, coming over to America. It's quite fun meeting people all around the world and then you're playing people from all around the world as well. Laura will return for her last season with the Golden Eagles this fall and will expect another winning season. Kicking off our winter sports, we saw a whole new team with men's basketball. Transfers like P.J. Reyes and Eladio Espinosa, the team improved drastically from last season, finishing second in conference and ranking 17th in the nation as they entered the first round of the NCAA tournament. Vivian, I know there's no I in team, but P.J. Reyes had a major role in the advancement of the team's dynamic this season. From receiving back-to-back -back player honors, finishing as Weaviac Player of the Year, he's definitely going to be that player to watch for next year. And he's definitely had the most recognition as a student athlete I've ever seen while I've been here, don't you think? Yes, and he was even invited to the Division II Reese's All-Star Game, where he was a starting player and he scored 22 points in the game. Um, I won Player of the Year at the conference, All-American, uh, made the All-Star team in Kentucky. Um, Weavey Act Player of the Week a few times, uh, that's it. Well, he wasn't the only player on the team. Eladio Espinosa was another major contributor with 286 rebounds, which ranked him fifth overall. Eladio, like PJ, was a Division I transfer. He shared with us his views on transferring to a Division II school. Obviously, I miss Division I a lot. You know, you got herd madness. Obviously, I went to Marshall. So, you know, a lot of people came and supported us. But, I mean, transition down, uh, you know, obviously, a, oh, a lot of things were expected for me you know, coming down from a Div uh, Division One college. And I expect a lot coming down here. Uh, the biggest transition is just, you know, the quick tempo. Obviously, it's much slower in Conference USA. So I would have to say that. And obviously, you know, new head coach. I was coaching before and coach there. I'm coming from D1, you know, it really wasn't a big change, but, you know, competition is different. But in Division Two, they play hard because everybody wants to go to another level. So, you know, it was the same. Just, you know, competition was a little easier, but it was still fun. This season, the Lady Golden Eagles had an uncharacteristically rough time in conference with the loss of Lindsey Kettner, Tarina Dixon, who were both two-time all-conference selections. at an exactly 500 in conference and had an impressive player on defense, Erica Roskulp, who owned the NCAA Division II title for rebounds. She was also named first team all Wiviac. Here is Roskulp and how she felt about the season. We did well. We had a lot of good upsets. We beat, we beat Glenville on a buzzer beater, which was really nice, and um, had a lot of close games. We beat Westlib and St. Helena's. Uh, successful growing season. The team graduates no seniors and will be returning with the entire lineup including Roskulp next year. A word from Coach Wynn. This season may not have been deemed the year for championship, but maybe, just maybe, it was meant to be more. It was meant to be more than an opportunity for expansion and for players to learn to love themselves no matter what the numbers on the scoreboard read. You can check out Coach Wynn's inspiring words at sherrywynnblogspot.com. Well, that wraps up our winter recaps. When we come back, we'll start off our spring sports with honoring the memory of a longtime coaching legend. Welcome back, and now we'd like to honor a longtime legend in Charleston.
It was a sad year for UC baseball with the loss of head coach and athletic director Tom Nazika. You know, Tom had been uh, here at the University of Charleston for 42 years. This was the only second institution that he worked at, so basically his entire career um, was spent here on our campus as a baseball coach and then the last 13 years as the baseball coach and the director of athletics. I know that he cared about the student athletes and um, there's no doubt in my mind. The team has done a great job in playing in honor of Coach Nazika and currently has the best record in the last four years with 14 wins and 12 losses, ranking them third in the Southern Division of the Weeviac. Catcher Igor Molina is leading UC in stats with his 380 batting average and five home runs so far this season. Sophomore outfielder Ryan Foster has the second highest number of hits with 38 and most stolen bases. We asked Ryan what, he, what it means to be a UC athlete. UC athlete, you know, school comes first, you got to be a student first, and then after that, athletics, play the best of your, best of your ability, go out there and do your thing. That's one of the nice things about attending a Division II school because athletes are able to focus on their schoolwork. Another men's team for spring is golf, who is currently ranked second in the region and qualified for the regional tournament starting on the 7th of May. Beswick and Jamin Smith have been selected to the all-conference first team and Shane Chaplin to the all-conference second team. Ben Beswick, a junior from England with an average score of 75.5, tells us why he loves UC and his team. Uh, it's been great. I mean, there's a, uh, like I said, Uni University of Charleston's wide uh, diversity. We got, you know, 40 different states and 37 different countries. So there's a wide variety of people here and it's, it's great. It's something new. It's something to talk to people and, uh, you know, I fit in really well here us and our teammates. Uh, it would have to be Jamin Smith uh, earlier this year shooting 107 from a college athlete. That's, uh, that's quite a high event but to be fair to the kid he came back and shot 69 two weeks later but that's something we all laughed about for quite some years. We look forward to seeing the results next weekend. Definitely. Despite this being their first year, the future is looking very bright for the women's golf team as well. team is led by coach Jim Jamison, a former PGA Tour winner and NCAA All-American at Oklahoma State. And here's a word from Jim Jamison. I'm proud of the ladies. They came out and got a good idea of where we need to improve to compete within the region. The more they can get on the course, they will continue to improve and grow, which will help them get this program headed in the right direction. Emily Griffith, one of the young talents on the team, is very excited about having a women's golf team this year. I was super excited. I just, I couldn't believe it. Everywhere I had looked that I wanted to go anyway, they didn't offer a women's golf team. It was always men's. And when they finally offered it here, I was just, as I said, I was excited about it. The team will be returning all of their players but one. Their only loss is graduating senior Elizabeth Austin. Men's tennis is still in the middle of their season and have been selected to continue as one of the 48 te teams in the NCAA Division II tournament. Their first opponent will be a revengeful competition against West Virginia Wesleyan 
who eliminated the Golden Eagles from the WeVeAct tournament last Saturday in a 5-2 decision. The face-off will take place on April 29th at Bluefield State. So far, a standout player has been junior Rico Williams, who is WeVeAct Player of the Week after dominating several matches. We asked Williams about some of his favorite memories at UC, and he shared with us this story. Probably my favorite story of this year and probably the past three or four years that I've seen on the court happen is probably uh, Matt Sherva playing our first scrimmage in Pikesville. And uh, he's playing this guy as number one, it's pretty good. Sherva's competing just fine, they're going toe to toe, and he hits a return and loses his racket and flies to the other side of the court. So Sherva has to run full sprint all the way to the other side of the court, pick up his racket. The guy hits another shot that hits the tape and falls over. Sherva sprints to the net and ends up losing a point and congratulating the guy. It's probably my favorite story. Well, I definitely don't know what I would have done in that situation. But moving forward with our spring sports, the Weepy Act Track and Field Championship meet takes place this weekend in Wheeling, West Virginia. The women's track team is currently ranked second. Multi-eventer Mecca Alley McDaniel is ranked first in the Wiviac in the 55, 100, and 200 meter dashes. She'll definitely rack up some points for UC this weekend. Mecca talks about her favorite moment so far this year. <laughs> Probably this Richmond trip. That bus ride was awful, but people on this trip, it was fun. We had a little fun time and everything. Actually going to the meet and sitting there and actually seeing our competition from D1 schools, that was probably like a wake up call for all of us. So that was probably my favorite just, and it was humbling for me because our conference isn't as good as D1. So it was just like, there's real people out here, like seriously, so. Mecca will be joined with Vivian here and 12 other qualifying girls this weekend. Another major event that draws a lot of people will also be this weekend with the 2012 Governor's Cup Regatta. Right here, one, two, give it all, three, four, legs down, five, eight, one, two, three, four. The UC crew team spends all season preparing for the Governor's Cup, which is always the biggest event of the year. So far this season, the Varsity 8 have taken two third place finishes and one victory. They're currently ranked fourth in the Eastern Region. Well, crew is a sport that not that many people have knowledge of. We have junior coxman Jasmine Perez describing the roles that make up the UC crew team. Um, it's all about, um, about eight rowers um, going together at the exact same time, having the exact same movement. So practice is practice, practice, practice is very important because if one person is slightly off, then the, boat, the whole boat could be off and that could cost us winning a medal by less than a second which is like our last race. It was bow ball to bow ball, which is at the end of the boat, there's an actual ball at the end and it raced till the finish. It was like a photo finish type deal. I did not realize how much technique was involved in the sport until we interviewed Jasmiel. To finish up our 2011-2012 year recap, we'll take a look at one of our most improved teams overall, UC softball. conference record, they'll be moving on to regionals for the first time in Golden Eagle softball history. Top performers in softball have been first baseman Janine Vasquez, outfielder Logan Tredick, and pitcher Emily Fultz. And Emily Fultz is only a freshman, but she has struck out the most batters in all of the Weeviac with 209 strikeouts. Coming back from injury, Vasquez has an impressive season so far with 55 hits, 5 home runs. 
During one of their games, we asked Janine how the season was going. Oh yeah, I felt um, as a team for our accomplishments, we accomplished um, getting things done, working together as a team. We really haven't experienced much unity my past years, but I feel like this year has been a great, um, everybody putting it in as much as they need to, everybody contributing their piece, paying their part, playing their role. So I feel like that's been a big part of this whole entire season, accomplishing everybody knowing their role and executing it. We wish Janine and the girls the best of luck in their regional tournament this weekend. Well, that should wrap up all of our sports. After recapping the past year at the Golden Eagles, it has been so nice to see the many achievements and success that has come out of this program. I know, and it's so rare to have such great talent at a small Division II university. We hope that you have enjoyed getting the inside look at all the sports that UC has to offer. Once again, I'm Kara hibbs -Leva. And I'm Vivian Souders. Thank you for watching this special edition of UC Sports Network.